The anger and rage over the Israel-Hamas war was on full display in the Ontario legislature today. MPPs at Queen's Park voted to censure MPP Sarah Jama over her refusal to remove comments criticizing Israel posted on her social media on October 10th. Jama, who represents the riding of Hamilton Centre, was also kicked out of the Ontario NDP caucus. We want to hear your side. Please stop and talk. Please no, you're blocking side. my physical way. You, you are Let's blocking my physical way. MPP JAMA has, you know, chosen not to work with us as a team, and so we've had to to uh, remove her from the caucus. You cannot continue to move forward when one person just continues to act unilaterally and not in good faith. This war has also prompted disagreement in the federal Liberal caucus. On Friday, more than 30 MPs, including 23 Liberals, signed an open letter to the Prime Minister that reads in part, we demand that Canada join the growing international call for an immediate ceasefire. And cities across the country saw protests by Palestinian and Israeli supporters. Calgary police made three arrests at a protest on Sunday. Charges ranged from breach of peace to one arrest for assault with a weapon. It's a lot. We've got the power panel here to discuss it. Lisa Raitt is a former Conservative Cabinet Minister, now Vice Chair of Global Investment Banking at CIBC Capital Markets. Brad Levine is with Council Public Affairs. And here with me in Ottawa, Vanda Nakata is a political consultant and former advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, while Rob Russo is a former CBC Parliamentary Bureau Chief, now writing these days for The Economist. Uh, hello, gang. Thanks for coming. Uh, Brad, Brad, let's start with you. Uh, Sarah Jama is, is a, was, until today, a New Democrat MPP. Now she's a censored censured independent MPP. What do you make of what's happened at Queen's Park? Yeah, and, and, and those two things that happened today are, are distinct um, actions. Uh, let's take the first one. Uh, her removal from the New Democratic Party's caucus. Uh, I support 110% Marit style and the caucus's uh, move uh, to eject uh, MPP JAMA uh, from caucus. Uh, and a lot of people on social media will say, well, it's because of, of her stance on, uh, on, on, the, on, the, uh, on the war in, uh, in the Middle East. Let's, let's, let's make a few things uh, clear here. One, as a member of a caucus, and as, and as a member of a caucus as important as the official opposition in uh, Canada's largest provincial legislature, you are not your own person. You cannot do as you see fit. You cannot make a, a agreements with your caucus, your fellow caucus members and right. your leader, and then go back on them. You, you are, if, if she wants to be the leader of a caucus, then she should run for a leader of a caucus, and then she'd get to set the tone and the policies of that caucus. But MPP Gemma is not. She is a member of that caucus from Hamilton Centre and could not bring herself to fulfill the obligations that she herself agreed to and made to her leader and her caucus, and you cannot tolerate that. That is not... Uh, that, that does not fit in with our uh, parliamentary system. Right. And therefore, Stiles did the right thing uh, and caucus stood up with Stiles and ejected her from that. And she, she's been acting like a, uh, an independent MPP and today she is uh, an independent MPP and Stiles and the caucus did the right thing. Okay, but, but Lisa, the, the legislature then, uh, the Conservatives, used their majority to vote to censure her, which means she has effectively been silenced over this and will not be recognized by the Speaker until she retracts, apologizes, and deletes her comments on social media. Is that the right move, silencing an MPP like this? Well, it's, it's one of those things where you, we believe in the freedom of speech, certainly, but uh, it also has repercussions in terms of your workplace. And in this case, the workplace is the legislature and the majority is held by the Conservatives and they did what they did. And that's something that you have to abide by. What the government has to think about is that, are they on the right side of this? Was this the right thing to do? Was it too heavy handed? And they obviously have come to the conclusion that it's the right thing for them to do and, and they went ahead and they carried it out. But I agree with Brad, these are two different things. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a separation between what the NDP did and what was done in the legislature today. Um, but this is a very emotional topic and there are some very strong feelings around it. And as you can see, you said at the top, David, this is a whole bunch of emotion and um, a lot it's very scary. It's, it's a very scary situation at this point in time, the way things are unfolding and the kinds of protests that are happening and the kind of language being used. So we're going to see more of this happening instead of less. 
Uh, Vandana, you know, there is some disagreement in the federal Liberal caucus. Certainly the 23 MPs, uh, there may be more than that who want to cease fire. That is not government policy. And certainly some of the, the Jewish members of, of, of the Liberal caucus in particular have spoken out against it. But no one's being censured and silenced for this disagreement. What, what did you make of what the Ford Conservatives did in Queen's Park today? Well, I think the difference is how the MPs that wrote that letter did. They did it across party lines. They did it in a respectful manner. They didn't openly challenge the leader of their parties. Um, they also mentioned uh, the importance of the release of hostages. Mm -hmm. They acknowledged the terrorist attack in Hamas. So they hit the right notes while asking for, you know, they want peace. They want a ceasefire. They want to get humanitarian aid in. So I think the note, the, the tone hits properly in a way that Ms. Jamas may have not. Um, I think the difference too is, is that, you know, no one would be surprised by this. Um, these are members, the ones that I've worked with, have long been vocal on human rights issues, but they know that politics is a team sport and there's a way to maneuver it. And there's a difference between having to be an activist and being in politics. And part of that is understanding how you work with your team. Rob, what's your take on today? Um, well, I, I went to uh, Ms. Jama's Twitter feed today because still at the top of her Twitter feed is a pinned statement, uh, yep. which looks like one-way con condemnation to me. It, it, I didn't see her condemn Hamas, uh, the violence of Hamas. In that statement, I didn't see her call for a release of the hostages. I did see her accuse Israel uh, and, and blame Israel of a whole bunch of things. I think later on in her Twitter feed, she did say that uh, she she abhors the violence, but it looked like a, a, a kind of a one way uh, condemnation. Uh, you know, for, for her and for others who are calling for a ceasefire, I, I say to them, ceasefire usually requires negotiation. Who, uh, who are the Israelis going to negotiate with? Are they going to go negotiate with Hamas, which is going for the destruction of Israel? What is a negotiation going to look like? How does that work? Um, so it's a difficult, difficult thing. I, I will say that the liberals, yes, they are divided, but you're about to have an MP on here, Ben Carr, who was at a very important meeting, I thought, last week yeah. of liberal MPs, of, uh, who, who, Muslims, Jews, Arabs, all together, uh, differing opinions. Uh, and, and it seemed like that there were some difficult but heartfelt conversations. At least those people are talking to each other and trying to arrive at some sort of way forward. And I didn't get that uh, impression from Ms. Jama. No, uh, uh, certainly not. But Brad, just, just a final point on this. Whatever the issue is, a government using its parliamentary majority to silence an opposition MPP, the precedent of that, uh, you know, it could be any issue. Uh, it, it, I just wonder what, what, what are your thoughts on, on that particular move that we saw at Queen's Park today, aside from the caucus issues, because that's, that's boilerplate political stuff of kicking people out who aren't, aren't playing by the rules. Right. Yeah, yeah I think that the, that the PC government went too far uh, in, its, in its motion today. Uh, only they voted for it. Um, and I think, it, I think it does set a dangerous precedent. That is, you know, if, if there's something, and, and yes, her statement, that original statement caused a lot of harm. Yeah. Uh, there's no question about that. Uh, and so you can voice your opposition to the tone and the content of that statement, uh, and they should have. But then to strip her of her ability to be recognized or to be called upon in the House, uh, I think, uh, goes too far. The, you know, it's funny because, you know, the, the, the PCs, now this is, so we, we've dealt, I think we've, we've touched on, you know, the issue as to whether or not, uh, you know, she was a lone wolf acting, but, you know, the, the same day that the RCMP were announcing that it was going to investigate the Ford government when it comes to the green belt, she decided to make that day the news cycle about herself and doubling down on that. Now what the Tories have is they, have, they, they, they can continue to distract away from their real crisis, which is on the green belt, and make it about MPP JAMA. That's just right. another indication as to she is taking away the work that the opposition is trying to do by holding this government to account on something like the green belt, and she's making it all about herself uh, and her her uh, and her take on the Middle East, which is I think is a shame. Okay, so Lisa, I want to get back to some of the, the images we showed off the top of the protests and sort of the social cleavages that 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 are on, on full display across the country uh, right now. Uh, there was a protest right outside this building. The Israeli embassy is near here. I, I, I get protesting against the Israeli embassy if you want a better life for Palestinians and a Palestinian state. We're now seeing protests at community centers, Jewish community centers, where there's kids going to preschool and day school there. There was a Jewish-owned cafe targeted in, in Toronto this weekend. Uh, what do you make of, of what we're seeing in the way these protests have evolved? 
So it's a little personal for me, David, because my husband, Bruce, is in a long-term care home, and it's the Apotex Care Home on the Baycrest campus, otherwise known as the Jewish Home for the Aged. And we've increased security there, and we have police officers there, and you have to sign in and sign out. So when I see these kinds of protests happening in other places, I naturally fear for the safety of the people going in and out of that facility and of the of the residents therewith. And these these are these are really um, I'm not going to say violent, but they are very pressure filled situations where it can go poorly very quickly. Uh, and I and I am concerned about it. And I don't even know who's supposed to stand up and say this has to stop. Um, perhaps that's what the legislature did today. Perhaps what they said was we're not going to condone this kind of action. Uh, you know, blocking of the Gardner Expressway, blocking of Young and Bloor this morning. Th this is this is significant in terms of the kind of force and the kind of of um, uh, disruption that's being that's being shown. And as I said, I don't know how it all stops. You know, Vandana, the, the rage is, is clear, right? You can see it if you spend any time on social media. You can see a lot of things. Um, and there are a lot of images coming out of Gaza that are fueling uh, a lot of the rage. I mean, how should the politicians respond to this at the municipal, federal, provincial level to try to calm some things down? I think you have to first recognize the trauma these communities are going through. Um, intergenerational trauma for anyone who survived the Holocaust or is, um, son or grandson of Holocaust survivor, but also, you know, people of color, uh, members of the Arab, Muslim, you know, Jewish communities, like there's a lot of trauma here. And across the board, you're seeing fear and anxiety, worry about the eradication of their people, worry about increased hate and discrimination, and also just a feeling of helplessness. Um, you know, um, I've mentioned before that I'm Tamil, and I remember that protest in, on the Gardner. But sometimes when people just feel helpless, they say, I need to make it, I need to do something. And this is what they feel like they can do. Um, it's not right to do anything that condones anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, or anything that, you know, threatens Israel's right to exist. But if people can peacefully protest and share what they need to share on, you know, educating people on what's happening in Palestine, you know, talking about, you know, we need aid, talking about a ceasefire, talking about peace. Um, the difference between now and 9-11, and this keeps coming up for me with, through stakeholders, is that I was in high school. There was no high Facebook. There's no yeah. Instagram. There's no Twitter. Now all you do is doom scroll, and you see it again and again. So taking a huge mental toll. So sometimes with these gatherings, what you're seeing is people's emotions just getting out of control. What politicians need to do is recognize that we need more mental health supports, and we need to call for calm. We need to see more of what Rob mentioned about Jewish and Arab and Muslim uh, MPs coming together and talking about dialogue. You know, uh, the mayor of Ottawa got together with a variety of faith leaders. So more of that to show that we need to have these open conversations and be respectful, I think will be needed. Right. So, Rob, on that, though, um, you know, we're on the cusp of a ground invasion and a lot of images are going to come out. And for every fire out there, there will be ample fuel. You mentioned Ben Carr. He's going to come in to talk to us about this, a Jewish MP. We tried to get some of the other signatories of that letter, non-Jewish. They don't want to come on. They don't want to talk about it. So you have Jews and non-Jews all feeling very targeted in this. Right. And it's likely to escalate as the conflict escalates. So how do leaders respond to this to help a country deal with this? Well, you, you can see the constant calibration. Uh, and and, I, and I, think, I think some errors uh, in, in what the prime minister and some of his ministers, uh, uh, some of the conclusions they seem to be coming to early last week after the, the uh, explosion at the hospital. You can see that when the, the prime minister is fond of saying diversity is our strength, but in this case, it's really diversity is leading to some division. Uh, and, uh, and I think that that might explain why there might be some hesitancy as well in some of those ministers, Champagne, uh, Jolie, and the prime minister himself in, in taking back, walking back some of the things they said after that explosion. So you know what I'm going to be looking for, though, in the next little while, David? Five of the seven G7 uh, leaders have now gone to Israel. Uh, Japan hasn't gone, probably won't go. They have had an independent policy when it comes to Israel uh, in, in trying to foster the Palestinian state. Is the prime minister going to go to Israel? Will he be, uh, will he ask to go? And uh, if he's asked, will he, uh, will he uh, be welcome there? That's an interesting question. Melanie Jolie has been there. She's in the region again, but um, 
We have not seen the prime minister obviously go there and have no idea if, if he is planning to go there and wouldn't know <laughs> for security reasons until it was obvious. Um, all right, gang, there's lots more to talk about, but unfortunately, there's no more time. I, I'm going to thank you for joining me. Thank you to the Power Panel, Rob Russo, Vanda Nakata, Lisa Raitt, and Brad Levine. Thanks so much.